Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1007. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1007, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we're going to learn a bunch of little tricks about how to use Excel all together. But uh, we're going to build a schedule for a loan payment. Now, our loan payment, or we borrow the bank loans out 1,200. Here's the annual rate. Ah, but it's going to be semi-monthly. So instead of 12 payments, it'll be 24. And the start of the loan is 7.15. And I want to build a schedule where I don't have to type out the dates, 7.15, 8.15. And I don't want to have to type out the end of the month. So I want a quick, easy way to build this schedule. The first thing is payment. There's a function that will tell you if you have this amount of loan and these details exactly how much each semi-monthly payment is. So equals PMT. It wants the rate. Ah, but the trick to financial functions like payment and rate and future value and present value is that all of the inputs have to same, be in the same time period. So we're given an annual rate, but really we want a semi-monthly rate. So I'm going to click on the annual rate and divide by the number of periods in one year. We could have done that in a cell over here to figure out period rate, but we could also do it right in the function argument rate. Comma, NPER, that's just number of periods. Well, this one's easy. It's for one year and 24 periods in a year. The present value. Now, financial functions require the proper cash flow, whether negative or positive. And you always got to do it from the point of view of the actual person. Now, this is the bank. So what is the present value? That means on the day you make the loan, how much is the loan worth? Well, it's 1,200. To the bank, is that an inflow or an outflow? Since we're doing it from the point of view of the bank, it's an outflow, right? This amount is going out of the bank's pocket and into the, the borrower's pocket. If we were doing it from the point of view of the borrower, that amount would be positive because it's coming into their wallet, right? So we have to put a minus here. Remember, this is the bank's point of view. We just took 1,200 from the bank and gave it to someone else. So it's minus out of the bank. Now, future value, that's if there's a balloon payment at the end. Type, that's either the begin or end. The default for this function is at the end of the period. So this loan is given on the beginning of the seventh month, and then the next payment will be done uh, in the semi-monthly in the middle of the month. So the default is end, so we don't have to put anything there. Anytime you see those square brackets, it means, hey, if you know what the default is, you can leave it out. For this future value one, hey, it's 0, so we can leave it out. All right, so you ready? Enter. Ah, it is a positive cash flow of 5110. That means the bank will be receive an inflow of 5110 every period. Now our next step is to fill out this schedule here. Now I want the uh, dates 7, 15, 8, 15, 9, 15, and then I want the end of each month here. Now there's two ways we can do this. One is, and I'll always want to avoid having to type them all in, but one is, is we could uh, put all the dates in, hard code them in, which means this template would only be good for start date of 7, 15, or we can do it with formulas, which means if we change this input, every date in the table should change. I'm actually going to copy this, Control C. Paste it over here, change the column widths a bit. If you wanted to hard code, which meant you were just going to use this template once, and you wanted to start with that date, but you didn't want to have to type the individual dates, we can use the date smart tag. I'm just going to start by typing 7 slash 15 slash 2013 control enter. Now, I point my cursor towards that fill handle in the lower right corner. And when I see my crosshair or angry rabbit, I click and drag. And that's a smart tag. And no way, by the way, that smart tag goes away. If I come over here and do anything like type something, it'll go away. But before it goes away, I'm going to say no way, fill months. Instantly, it's the 15th of each month. Now I can come over here and actually in the top cell, type 7 slash 31 slash 2013, Control Enter, and do the same trick. Drag it down with my angry rabbit and fill months. And boom, it knows the end of the month, including February. Now I could fill out this payment here, but that's the static method. It avoids a lot of typing. But what if you wanted to have the dates totally update if I change this start date of the loan. 
All right, so I'm going to come here. The first thing is I'll say equals and click on that, that single formula, enter. Now the next formula that I can copy down, I'm going to use the E date. E date is great. You give it a start date and tell it how many months in the future you want. Now that's a relative cell reference, so as I copy it down, I'll always look at the prior month, comma, I want to go to the next 15, jump exactly one month ahead, so I type a 1. No way. Copy it down. We get the same dates as over here, but if we change this to 8, for example, instantly everything updates. Control Z. Now what do we do over here? We simply use the end of month, EO month the start date, but here's the trick, comma, we can jump months forwards or backwards. And by the way, for the E date, too, you could put 0, which is uh, no months, which would be silly, or 1, which is one month. You can also put a minus 1, which means go back one month. So for us, we always want the end of, sorry, of this current month, so I'm putting a 0. Remember, that could be negative 0 or positive. And there we have the end of the month. All right, so we have our dates. Now I just need the same exact payment each time, so watch this, I'm going to do a trick. Highlight, and before I come over here and highlight this other non-contiguous range, a range not next to each other, I'm going to hold the Control key, and then I'm going to highlight. So holding Control while clicking and highlighting will allow you to highlight areas not next to each other. Now on that active cell, I'm going to say equals B6, but I'm going to hit the F4 key to put that dollar sign in all directions. Now when I Control Enter, it'll populate that formula into all the highlighted cells. Control Enter. All right, now I'm going to um, total these up because I want to see what the total payment after um, all payments is. Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. I'm going to redirect it. Now check this out. Remember, just a moment ago, we used the Control key to highlight non-contiguous areas. We can do that here to Control. And no way, there it is. That control in the sum function puts the comma in so that we get to the, the next argument. Enter. So it looks like we paid a little bit more due to interest. So the difference between these two, I'm going to say uh, the total amount paid minus the loan we received at the beginning. And so the total interest is 26.43. All right, so uh, that's what we wanted to do in this video. If you wanted to do it slightly different way, you could build an amortization uh, schedule. You could come down here. Now, this will tell you for each period what the payment is, how much the interest was, and what the balance reduction is, and what the total balance on the, the account is. I'm going to say for period 0, that means when you first go into the bank and say, hey, I want a loan, what is the balance? I'm going to go up and get that. It's 1,200. Now the payment, we've already calculated that. I'm going to go up and get that amount there. And F4, Control Enter, double click and send it down. So the same thing all the way down. The interest, well, here's how it works. If we send in 50, or no, that's how much we sent in. Some of it's interest, some of it's principal, but we don't know how much. Well, the way you calculate interest is that's how much was that's how much was sitting in the account for the period. So you take that amount times the period rate. So in this cell, I'm going to say, hey, relative cell reference, one up and two over times my period rate. Now, I didn't calculate the period rate in a cell, but no problem. I'm going to click on uh, B2 and F for it to lock it, divided by, and then I can go and get my 24, F4. So that formula will work all the way down, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now, zero's all the way down because it's calculating off of these. We haven't completed the table. What is the amount of the balance, uh, the reduction in our loan? Well, we sent in this amount. They took that much as interest. So boom, the difference, that's how much we get to reduce our loan by. I can double click and send it down. 5110 the whole way. Well, again, we still haven't calculated um, our last column here. Equals, what's the balance? Well, I sent in, I mean, I had this much that I borrowed. They allowed me to reduce the loan amount by this 49, even though I sent 5110 in. That relative cell reference formula, Control Enter, double click and send it down. And guess what? When we come down here and total our interest, Alt equals, I'm going to redirect it, holding Shift and right there. Better get the uh, total interest, right?
So 2643, is that what we got up here? That is what we got up here. And the total, well, of all the amount we paid in, that would be the 5110. And we don't need to do that. We already did that calculation. All right, uh, that was a little bit of fun with uh, a loan schedule for a semi-monthly loan for one year and some fun with dates, either with formulas. And you know, my convention is usually to add green wherever there's a formula. And I just flat out forgot to put some green there. Right? That was a great uh, E date and end of month. Or we used our smart tags. All right, see you next video.